Hello, my name is Elijah Henderson from Cryptid Studies Institute. I'm here with my dad, Johnny Henderson. And today we'll be uh, interviewing a wonderful lady from Kansas named Tracy. And she's going to tell us today about her dogman encounter and her Bigfoot encounter she's had through her through her lifetime. Ma'am, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. That's great to hear. I was really happy that you reached out to us to uh, tell us about your encounters. Well, thank you. It's a, from what I understand, it's a, it's a very wonderful encounter, just extremely interesting. And, and w what age lady are you, ma'am, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 55. You're just a couple years older than I am, so you're too old to be playing games and telling fibs, so I think you're a truthful lady. Yes, I am. Very truthful. I'm a Christian and I'm truthful. Well, I love the sound of that. We're Christian as well. That's awesome. So, um, I guess we'll jump right into it. Now. And uh, can you tell us uh, about your experiences uh, in as much detail as possible? Sure. The first time I saw Bigfoot, <clears throat> I was five or six years old. And my parents were at my grandparents' farm. They were picking tomatoes. And I wanted to sit in the car because there are spiders. And I'm scared of them. Well, I'm sitting there in the car and over the fence in my grandparents' field, a Bigfoot stepped over it, was standing there watching my parents. And he has, was probably about eight to nine feet tall, covered in red hair. His head was conical shaped, um, very pronounced eyebrow, kind of like a, a Neanderthal. Stubby nose, but more human than eight, and just a normal mouth. His face was leathery, and his his fur was a bit shaggy. But he just stood there and watched them for probably about ten minutes. And after he he stepped over the fence again and went back into the woods. Because where my grandparents lived, lived on their farm, it was a really rural, woody, woody area. And they'd been known to frequent there, along there, to, for quite some time, many years. And when I, he stepped back in it, over the fence, I went and I told my mom I'd seen a monster watching them. And she said that was Bigfoot and that we probably ought to leave. And we did. And that was the first time I ever saw a Bigfoot. That sounds like it was very frightening for a child. It was. I went down in my seat so <laughs> only I, I could barely see him up over the dash. It was terribly frightening. And because I didn't know what it was, I thought it was a monster. And I've also seen Bigfoot a few other times. The most terrifying encounter that I had with Bigfoot, we were fishing on the Republican River here in Kansas. And it started getting, wasn't dark yet, but it was like dusk. And across the river from us on the bank, five deer ran out and this Bigfoot, he was probably the same size, eight, nine foot tall, but he was covered in black hair, black hair, very muscular, and he was chasing those deer. Well, I got a good look at his face when he roared at it, and he jumped in the river, and he had, uh, like a stubby nose, um, same kind of forehead, conical head. Uh, red eyes, um, but he had fangs, and he came in the river after us. And my dad picked me up. My brother and my mom ran, ran up the bank. We got in the car, and he chased us for quite a while, probably about a mile. You could hear his feet slapping against the, the road, the, the pavement. And how close did it get to you, ma'am? 
got within seven feet. Within us. seven feet? Yep. He was he was about seven feet in the water. And that was terrifying and I still have nightmares about that. So he's definitely close enough to get a good look at. Yeah, I got a really good look at him. Probably way right. face is more human like than monkey. I know a lot of people say that it's monkey like and it is kinda because of the eyebrows. But the rest of his face is rather normal except for you know, except for the red eyes and the fangs. And he had a conical head and very muscular. And I never heard since then a roar like that ever again. I, I, that was, I mean, the, the, you could feel it when he did that. You could feel it in your body when you roar it. That's how loud it was. Just curious, is, is there any way you could tell what gender it was? It was a male. It was a male? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And did it roar at you or at the deer? At us. See what happens, my mom caught from across the bank. And I guess he thought that we interrupted his hunting and that's the way I took it anyway. And my parents, because he didn't know we were sitting there on the opposite side of the bank. And I took it as that he was mad because he thought we were interrupting his hunting. And once he once he saw my mom after she called, he roared and jumped in the river, and we got out of there as <laughs> fast. Do but you feel I, like I, he, I'm sorry? I didn't mean to. I'm interrupt. sorry. I go, thought you were talking. Do you feel like he meant to cause you any harm? Yes, I think that if he had caught us, he had killed us. I really do believe that with all my heart. And how fast, do you happen to know how fast y'all were going to have to get away from it? Well, I don't really, really know for sure. But I know that it, it almost got the car and my dad just slammed the brake, the, not the brake, but the gas pedal down and it finally lost it. So it's probably a fairly high te uh, speed. Yeah, it was. But I couldn't tell you exactly how fast. It was terrifying. You know, we could hear it. And I was on the floorboards because it scared me so bad of the car. I could hear it. And his feet slapping against the pavement running after us. Any chance you got to see its hands? Like if it had claws or long fingernails or uh, what the hands were like? I think the hands were fairly human looking um not much fur on his hands uh, he was pretty close so so it's kind of looked his fingers were longer his arms are longer kind of very lanky in a way kind of in a way but he's very muscular and, and what about the the feet as well could you tell anything about the feet as it ran I couldn't tell anything about it except that I could hear his feet slapping on the pavement. You could hear it, hear them slapping, like slapping sound on the pavement. Did you see if it had nails or claws by any chance? Um, I think nails. I didn't see any claws. And I know I'm just asking you to speculate, but do you think it was what some people call a gugway? I don't think I've ever heard of a Gugway. Uh, I've not heard a lot about them, but some people call them a face eater. It's, it's like a Bigfoot, I guess, with sharp teeth and I guess, uh, almost a tiny bit of a muzzle or a protrusion. Maybe like a baboonish face. Right. I wouldn't say so because um, his face is mostly human. Except he had a stubby nose, not at all like a gorilla. And he had a, fair, a fairly human face, except for the, the pronounced eyebrow. Definitely scary enough to produce fear, though. Oh, God. I can't tell you how much fear I was in. I can't even put into words. And 
for days after, you know, I just wanted to be with my mom all the time. It just was that scary for a very long time. And we didn't go back there to fish for years. Well, really, how could you ever mentally prepare for something like that, you know? You, you can't. You know, you can't. And um, I hear people saying how friendly they are and everything. And I'm sure some are. Because I've seen, you know, a few that weren't mean or anything. They just went about their business. Or just left and just went back in the woods. But that one... That one was, I mean, that terrified me a big foot for life. Now you, you know, said I'm there's other terrified of them. We we talked earlier, and you said that there were other people in your area that had had seen these big feet, big foot. Yes. Yeah. Um. There's a guy that five miles down the road from where I live lived at the time, where my grandma's farm was, and. He see them frequently. He, they come up and, well, at one, at one point he's got chickens, they were stealing eggs. And he's taken a couple shots at them, which I don't agree with. I don't think he should have done that, but they come clear up to his house and look in his windows and stuff. So he, he knows about them too. But he probably wouldn't say much, you know. Right. And again, you never know. He might. Do you know of anyone in your area ever having been harmed by one of these? No, I don't. I can't <clears throat> say I do. <clears throat> I think that one big fit that came after us, I think that was a incident that probably rarely happens. You know, I think they're probably ones that do not like people and they get aggressive and there's ones that just kind of curious about people and leave them alone and for the most part that's what i've seen you know the kind that just leave you alone if you leave them alone but that one that's the one that came after us i will never forget it and i'm still terrified to this day and have nightmares to this day from that it sounds very terrifying. It was. It was awful. I don't. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I would imagine that would be very traumatizing. It was. It was. For a long time, I didn't want to. And I loved to fish. But for a long time, I wouldn't go to the Republican River to fish. I'd go to different places. You know, whatever people and stuff like that. And it just scared me. It's only now that I've been going, I live right here by the Republican River, and I can hear them screaming to each other back and forth. Once in a while, I'll sit out and I'll listen. But you know, I'll, if I get a recording of that, I'll send it to you. Oh, we'd oh, love please to have it. it. Now, can yeah. you describe the landscape where you're at? I live in a very tiny town. Um, Right beside us, it's a, about a three block, a three block walk to the Republican River. It's very wooded, it's a very wooded area around us. And like I said, we can just walk right over there to the river, and it's pretty wooded through there and around us. Because this is our town has probably got a hundred people, maybe two hundred at the most. Very rural. It's very rural. rural. Are and you in southern, uh, northern, eastern, western Kansas? We're in northern Kansas. Um, the N Nebraska uh, line is probably about 15 miles from here. Oh, so it's very close to the border. Yeah, it is. It is, and it gets pretty wooded before you get into Nebraska, too. There's lots of woods by the streams, and it's just lots of pretty country. I bet it is. You're in big sky country, aren't you? Pretty much, yeah. Nice. Great country. Now, you were telling us when we talked to you originally that you, uh, 
may have been in Washington State and had an experience? Yeah, I was in Washington State for about, oh gosh, six or seven years. And I I lived in a rural mm-hmm. town like what I do now, up in the mountains, called Tonino, Washington. And there's only a few, like a few hundred people in it, mountains all around us. And one night we heard a terrible, terrible ruckus going on. So we stepped outside to see what was going on. And our dog was terrified he wouldn't come out of the cabin because we lived in the cabin. So we were standing there looking and watching and out from the, the neighbor's yard comes this big fit. He had a chicken under each arm. And he was bigger, he was the biggest big fit I've ever seen. He was probably 11, 12 feet tall because he just missed the street lamp, touching the street lamp with his head. Wow. And he, he jumped across two railroad tracks that were about 10 feet each. I mean, he was really, really running. And he ran out and it landed in the middle of a highway and two cars almost hit him. And then he ran up the side of the, the mountain, jumped and went up the side of the mountain. And they had the cops down there and everything. And people down there taking, getting tracks, plaster footprints, and everything down there that night. But he was huge. I mean, gosh, I don't, I've never seen anything like it. And just, I guess they're bigger there or something. Around what year was it? Oh gosh, it was in the 80s, it'd be about 82 probably. Because I remember I had my daughter the year after that and we moved back to Kansas. Goodness. Yep. Now, um, you really piqued my interest earlier. You was telling us that you were going to karaoke one night and you took a wrong turn. Can you tell us a little bit more about that in as, in as much detail? Oh, but first, sure, uh, but first, uh, can you describe the Bigfoot that was there in Washington? We didn't get an appearance of it. It was covered in dark brown hair. I could only see the back of him. He was covered in dark brown hair, very muscular, conical head, and had pretty long fur. It was pretty long. It was about four or five inches long. And when he got under the street light, he missed probably about a foot from touching the street light. And my husband at the time was so terrified that he could hardly speak for a couple of hours after that, after seeing it, because it was so huge and, and had those chickens. Um, I saw it from the back, so I, that's probably about all the detail I can give you for that. When that's plenty. I, I, yes. He sounds majestic. I don't think two chickens would have fed him very mm-hmm. well, though. <clears throat> well, I don't think that he wanted to <laughs> meant any harm, you know. Yeah. It, it, as far as I know, I don't think he meant any harm to anybody. He was just hungry and wanted a snack, probably. Just going about his business, I reckon. Yeah, that's kind of the way I looked at it. And it, for me, it didn't terrify me because I'd seen it before, you know, here in Canada. And, you know, we had some other experiences in Washington State where we didn't see them, but we knew that they were there. Because they'd make noises and whistles and whoops and throw rocks and that kind of thing. Yeah, those were all common traits. Yeah, they like to they like to clap rock, rocks together. I know a lot of people might hear tree knocking. But a lot of the time here in Wash in Kansas, they take rocks and, and they clap rocks together. You can hear the difference, you know, between the two. So I don't know if that means something different when they do that or not. Now you were telling us that somebody was warning people not to do that. Yeah, my brother, Jody, um, he was a 
biology professor here in Kansas, and he told his friend not to be clapping a lot rocks together because they don't like it. And he did it anyway, and Jody said quit, and he wouldn't quit. And pretty soon, they looked up and looked over, and there was a big black Bigfoot standing by his truck, his friend's truck. He was baring his teeth at him. It scared the hell out of the, excuse my language, out of the guy that was with my brother. And it bared its teeth at him, and then it went walked off so they got in the truck and left and according to Jody's district description of it it was a big black one and it had the conical head and the, the eyebrow um pronounced eyebrow ridge and um it had brown eyes I believe what he said that's very, very fascinating it is. I, it is really fascinating. They don't like that when you when you do that. At least the ones here, they don't like it because I don't know why. They just don't. Might be somewhat of a an aggressive trait to them. It very well could be. If you don't mind I'm, me asking, ma'am, uh, you said the very first one you seen it was a reddish hue. Uh, yeah. Was that almost like a ginger color? Or was it yeah, almost it like was. a orangutan? Or like an orangutan color, kind of like a, a dark kind of red? Kind of like an orangutan color of red. We had somebody up here, uh, we're, we're based out of Clarksville, Tennessee, and we had somebody uh, uh, close to this area tell us that they seen a that same color of fur going through the woods, and as far as I know, there's nothing in this region that would have that same color fur. Yeah, that's... that's like the orangutan came kind of red is what the ones in Kansas and there's um it's rarely you see a black one and from what I can determine the black ones are the more aggressive ones here anyway it sounds like it now man so, if, uh, if you don't mind elaborating uh on the night that you went karaoke uh karaoke in and uh took a wrong turn well, we were on our way to karaoke in Superior, Nebraska, and that's about 30 miles away. And um, we, we missed our turn is what happened. And we drove about a mile too past it, and there the ditch stood this huge, looked like a werewolf. And... It was covered with dark gray and white fur. It had the muzzle of, a, kind of a long muzzle. And it had fangs. And the eyes, you know, the head looked like a wolf. Only a really, really, I don't know, evil looking wolf. And it tried to grab our car as we, it, it actually got, it hand on our window and we were moving pretty fast when we saw it it was about probably nine ten foot tall is huge i noticed you said it almost got its hand on your car yeah Instead it was like a, a hand it was like a cross between a human hand and an animal hand kind of because it had claws did it have fingers yeah and claws. Now, some people described as almost looking like a raccoon's hand. Did it have almost that similar appearance? That's similar, yeah. Very similar. And you uh, specifically mentioned that they looked uh, very similar to the ones in Dog Soldiers, right? The very tall yes. white ones? Yes. It did. And what about and the it... legs for those who are listening and feet, if you saw them? Well, the legs, uh, to me... They look normal. Like a but person's leg? Weren't. Yeah, but the feet weren't. They were like, um, they were like, kind of like the hands, only they were really long with claws. Had really long, like, toes with claws. 
Did it have like almost that, like the double joint, the, what did you say, degenerate? No. Degenerate. Yeah. Degenerate. Yeah. So it had that back leg appearance. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Were the legs hairy? Yes. It was covered in um, dark gray and white fur. Could you and tell it if it was flowing. a male? The fur looked very flowing on it. If you know what I mean. It was really like... Very thick, like, right? Similar to yeah. how a lamb's fur is almost? Yeah, similar to that. Could you tell if it was male or female? Couldn't tell. Did you? Did it give off a, a malevolence? Oh yeah, yeah. It bared its teeth, and it tried to get our car, like I said. And we were just absolutely. And just that's the most terrifying thing I've seen. And I couldn't believe I saw it. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Was it dark I mean, when I, you saw it? I thought. Huh? Was it dark when you saw it? Yes, it was. And you said the face, it had somewhat of an evil evil nature about it. Is there any way you could elaborate on that? Well, when it had its teeth curled back, its eyes were crunched, and they looked like slits when it did that. And just, you could feel the, the glare, like it didn't want you there. It just kind and, of... I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, you said, was it like it just kind of drew its all of its skin back and just bared its teeth? Yeah, that's exactly like the way it was. Could you tell an eye color? No, um, not really. I I didn't see its eyes that well. I saw its face and everything, but I didn't see his eyes good enough to tell you what color they were. Could you tell any size on the teeth? Oh, jeez. I'd say probably his longest fangs were about three inches long. That's a good-sized tooth. Yep. And I, like I said, I still to this day, you know, what the hell? <laughs> you know, seeing something like that, I, I'd never heard of Dogman or anything like that when I saw it. A, a lot of people describe it as a werewolf. Did did he? Is that what you that's, felt like you were looking at? That's what I thought it was. That's exactly what I thought it was, me and my husband. And do you get the feeling that if it had gotten access to your car, it would have harmed you? Oh, it definitely would have. Because you could just feel... I, I don't know how to describe it. You could just feel that it just wanted to hurt you. and it, it just wanted to hurt you. And allow me to follow that question up with, they're always finding abandoned cars on the side of the highway. Do you think that it's possible that Maybe dogmen are responsible for all these missing car or these empty cars with missing passengers. Very well could be, because like I said, it tried to get our car. I'm glad we were going fast. Now, would you say that you've experienced the darker side of a Bigfoot and a dogman? Which one filled you with the most dread? I think the, I think the dogman did. The werewolf did. Because that's something, you know, I never imagined could be true until I saw it. And it, that made me more scared than the big fit did. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be very, very terrifying. Oh, gosh. It's, there's not a word to describe how terrifying that is. And I wouldn't put it past it to drag people out of their cars one bit. Because if it could have got us, it would have hurt us. And, you know, where there's one, there's probably more. Now, how did your husband feel? I, I know you can't really speak for him, but how did he feel ab about the dog man? Well, he was terrified. I and mean, he was shaking all over just like me. And we both kept looking at each other, asking ourselves if we really saw that. You know, because we didn't know there was any such thing as it. And I'd never heard of dog man until after that. And I did some research on it. And yeah, he was terrified. He was just absolutely terrified. And to this day, we haven't been back to <laughs> that area. Do you remember what time of year it was? What, uh, what the moon phase was? Or what... Uh... The, moon, the moon was full that night. 
and that was just a few years ago. About four years ago. Okay. And we were um we were near Mankato, Kansas. We turned around in Mankato to get to the to the karaoke and when we started getting to the spot where we saw the rare were werewolf we uh, he put the pebble down and we went as fast as we could past that area and we didn't see it you know going back and turning the right turn to get to superior nebraska where karaoke was what time of year but was it it was probably it was cold outside so gosh it's just starting spring i think just starting because they do. They have a, a public lake, public uh, lake, big lake there in Superior, and they were doing something um, to the lake. It had some kind of allergy, and they were treating it so no one could go in camping or anything there. It's called Lovewell Lake, and that was pretty close to where we were. But this this thing was just. You know, you see on TV the werewolf movies. You don't expect to see one for real. Has it made it more difficult for you to watch werewolf movies now? I don't watch them anymore. I haven't watched them since I saw that. Well, you know, when you're growing up, I mean, at least you knew Bigfoot was a thing and they would tell you about it, but I don't suppose you were ever told that something that looked like a werewolf was running loose. No, I was never told that. And so when we saw it, we just couldn't believe what we'd seen. I told my brother about it, you know, and he's a wild, like, he's got a master's degree in wildlife biology, and he believed us. And he said, I believe you. There's things out there, there's Bigfoot, and that could be out there too. It seems like that first dog man encounter is always a very rude awakening for people. Oh, it was. You, you don't expect to ever see something like that in your life. You know, and I, it makes me very cautious when I, now when I go, because I love to fish, you know, and I love to hunt. And it makes me very, very cautious when I go out. You know, I, I live right by the river here in Scandia. And I don't go out after dark. I go out on my porch and that's about it. If they're screaming up the river back and forth to each other, you know, that you know they're around and for me I just at night time I won't go into the woods. I won't do it. After the things I've seen. Do you have a happen to have like a porch light or anything like that? I do. Okay, I've heard that keeping a light uh somewhere outside, uh it kinda helps protect from that kind of thing because they don't like the light? No, they don't. Um, at the end of the town, um, there's apartments. We used to live in one of those before we bought our house here, here in Scandia. And the big fit would come up to, it was really dark, by, by the way, in the, in the town. Very wooded right there by the river. And the big fit would come up to the dumpster and rummage through the dumpster. I saw that three times when I lived in the apartment. So I, you know, like I said, I don't go out after dark because I don't want to piss one off. <laughs> <laughs> that's I blame you. No, that's their time to prowl, I reckon. Yeah, it, it is. And, it, you know, in dark areas like that, you know, I remember I was dating a guy that was uh, lived five miles from my grandma and grandpa's farm and I had one follow me home and that was pretty scary but it ran off when I see I saw it in the driveway when my wife hit it and I'd just been at my boyfriend's house out there by um where my grandparents farm was where there's a lot of them and it was standing in my yard so they do follow people home have you ever had the experience of, because I've heard this from other sources as well, that you'll be walking somewhere and you'll hear it start to walk. You'll stop, it'll stop. If you start to run, you'll hear it run. 
Yeah, I've had that experience quite a few times. So it's probably fairly common for that region. Yeah, I'd say it's probably uncommon for them to attack you here. I mean, I think what happened to us was just, I don't know, a, a very rare thing. And do you know that uh, at, as uh, years go on and progress continues, do you know if uh, encounters have uh, dropped dramatically or anything like that? I think, if anything, they've increased. They've because, been... Because, you know, now I see them in the, in the, um, like in the summer and spring and stuff, I see them at least three or four times a year. And, you know, they're getting closer to where they're not so afraid of people. They're kind of getting a lot bolder and bolder, right? Yeah. Going up to the dumpster by those apartments, it's pretty bold. But it's really dark. Dark, dark down there anyway. It's the end of town. It's a small town. A huge cornfield by the river right there. Easy for them to... You know, to to get into the, where they can hide. Is there a, a a large food source where you come from? Like I know you mentioned yes. cornfields, but a lot of deer and uh, other uh, food sources that they could access. We have a, a very large population of white-tailed deer here. Yeah, my brother took a really big one, two hundred and eighty-five pounds, ill dress. So. There's some pretty big deer here, and you see them all the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's pretty big deer. You see them all the time. We had one come up by our apartment there. Um, it was eating our dog food. <laughs> well, that seems to be a common thing. Now, do, do any of your neighbors ever complain of having uh, missing pets or livestock? I haven't heard of that yet, but lately there's there's a lot of cats that have gone missing. Interesting. Now, there's been about eight cats that I know of that have gone missing, and no one's been able to find them. So there, that's, I don't know if it has something to do with that, maybe. But we have some pretty big owls around here, too. Like, great, we have great horned owls. And they, they get huge. They can give a cat a run for its money. Yes, ma'am, they can. Did you say that someone uh, earlier, did you say someone saw a Bigfoot with a hawk on it, uh, in its hands? With a what? With a hawk. Um, yeah. I have, I have seen that. One had a bird. I don't know what it was. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, I have another question about the uh, Dogman sighting. Mm. Do you know if there was a, a body of water anywhere close to where you seen the Dogman? Lovewell Lake. Lovewell in, Lake. In uh, Kansas. I think it's, it's right by the line, I think. Okay. And uh, yeah, I was looking at the geography around there, and it, that's not too far from uh, the Republic River, is it? No, it's not. Um, I live three blocks from the Republican li River here in Scandia, Kansas. Sounds like you're living right in a hot spot. Yeah, we live. We live. We hear them yelling back and forth. And see them quite a bit. Other people see them, but they just don't want to talk about it to anybody. Me, I've never been afraid to speak my mind, so, you know, if you believe me, you believe me. If you don't, you don't, you know. That's, I speak my mind, and that's something I would never lie about. Well, I like being in in the company and talking to straightforward people. <laughs> you know, there's too many people try to put on airs and act like they're too good to talk about things like that, but, you know, I, I, I just... Love it when people tell the truth and are straightforward. We uh, come from a region of the country. We're from Appalachia where, like you said, people don't like to talk about the things they see and experience. I get that. Yeah, that's the way it is here. 
people are real tight-lipped about Bigfoot. You know, um, my grandparents on their farm, there was a lot of Bigfoot. And a neighbor would hear him screaming that back and forth. And he's the only other person that I've ever, besides this guy that lived five miles down the road from them, that I've ever heard talk about him. And they have great, they have a great food supply here. They have lots of white-tailed deer. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your experiences? Anything that you maybe thought of that you didn't at first? Yeah, um, several times uh, last year, my husband and I saw a gray one. He had gray fur. And it was not as muscular as the ones we've seen. It's kind of lanky. And I can't tell whether it was a dog man or a big fit, to be honest. Could you see any type of ears of any kind on it? Or just mostly a shake going through the woods? I, I couldn't see its ears. Um, it's just so fast, like a flash. He'd be in the woods before we could really see much but the fur. And it was really gray looking. His body was, like, thin, with long arms. But it's a, it's a quick view, but it's quick enough where you could still tell what it was, though, right, basically? Basically, yes. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that was really shocking to me, because I never would have guessed there'd be gray ones. Um, well, in this region, uh, we have an area called White Bluff. And there's a certain beastie up there, or it, it seems to be a type of Sasquatch. They call it the White Bluff Screamer, and it's uh, described as having white fur. Or gray. Or white well, or gray. Maybe that's what this is, then. It could be very well be. I'm not, I'm not brave enough, though, to go out and sit in the woods and wait and <laughs> try, try to get film of them. I'm a chicken. You sound pretty brave to me. Well, you know, I don't feel very brave when it comes to that. It's pretty scary, you know, when you know there's things like that in, in the woods. It can, but, it can take some time getting used to the, to the thought. You know, uh, I've asked the Lord many times why I was allowed to see these things. Because a lot of people never see anything like that. So I feel kind of fortunate for being able to see these things and being able to tell you about them. It's really uh, information a lot of people don't get to share, so uh, in ways it is a blessing. I agree. Everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. And I would say, you know, to, to whoever listens, when you're out in the woods... Be cautious and be careful and have some kind of protection with you because they can, you know, they're, they're part animal still. If an animal feels afraid, it will attack. So I would, I would suggest anybody to carry some kind of weapon with them for protection. That's very sound advice. Well, ma'am, thank you so much for allowing us this time to interview you. It's very extremely interesting. Uh, I had a lot of fun listening to it. Yeah, and if you remember anything else you want to talk about or have another experience, we'd love to have you contact us. I will. I told uh, Elijah that I was going to try to record them when they're screaming down at the river because we live three blocks from the river. And they scream back and forth to each other, and it happens like 2 and 3 in the morning. I, I stay up late. It's a habit of mine. And sometimes I'll go out on my front porch, and I'll just listen and enjoy the fresh air. You know, we live in the sticks so that's the best place to live absolutely no, I agree absolutely agree well we'd definitely love to hear it if you capture anything no well, I will sure let you know I do Tracy we are eternally grateful well thank you I'm grateful too to be able to get it out and tell you guys uh, if you don't mind how did you uh, stumble upon our videos I look for big fit videos and 
And um, the first one that I listened to was uh, Nightmare Nuggets, I think, or something like that. Yeah. And the way that Elijah tells a story, it's like music, the way he puts his words together. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, a lot of people get. give us a hard time because they think we that we talk too big, but that that's just our normal lingo, really. Yeah. Well, I love it. I think it sounds very good. And, you know, I keep track of your videos and your blog talks, and I love them all. It's, it's absolutely wonderful to know that there are other people that have had the experiences like what I have. Well, it probably helps to talk about it a little bit. So if there's any way we can help you with anything like that, or if you ever get scared and just need to talk about it, you can call us and, you know, we'll just chew the fat as long as you need to. We'll help act as cryptid therapy. Awesome. Thank you. That's so sweet of you guys. You're very welcome. You guys have a nice night, and thank you so much. I'm glad to have been able to talk to you. Yes, ma'am, and, and give our regards to your husband. Tell him thank you for letting us borrow you for a, about an hour. I will. He's, yeah, he's out putting wires on the car, so <laughs> he's not bored one talking. All righty, <laughs> ma'am. Well, you have a blessed evening. And you too. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.